papa. Oh. Oh. Mm. This is the best day of my life. Taskmaster Australia. My name is Tom Gleeson, but that's just the name my parents gave me, bland and devoid of meaning. <laughs> On this stage, I am known as the Taskmaster and am here to judge comedians while sitting atop a throne, fit for a king, or at the very least, a shopping mall Santa. <laughs> Unlike Santa, I do not have gifts for every child around the world. I have one gift for one adult. It's a replica of my head. <laughs> Playing for the golden honour is our cast, as they always are, Daniel Walker. <laughs> Jimmy Reese, Julia Morris, Luke McGregor and Nina Ayama. And I am not on my journey alone, no great man is. Santa has his elves, his deer and his attentive, loving wife. I've got kind of all of these three rolled into one in the form of my humble assistant, Tom Cashman. <laughs> All right, let's talk prize task lesser Tom. What have they brought? Our contestants have been asked to bring in the most surprising thing to bring to a barbecue. The person with the most surprising thing will be awarded five points by our taskmaster and the person who wins this whole episode tonight will take home all five prizes. OK, I love surprises and I love barbecues, so this is perfect. Let's start with Jimmy. Um, well, I, it's more to surprise the host of the barbecue. It's actually a, a barbecue. <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. It's also surprising, but it also kind of belittles the barbecue up. Yeah. <laughs> they might be feeling a little surprised, but also then taken aback that they're thinking, am I an inferior barbecuer? It's going to be hard to top. Nina, what do you got? I brought a plate of hair. <laughs> All right. Well, people might remember that Luke brought just a little pile of red hair last week and it didn't really work out for Luke. Yeah, it did look like your pubes. Um, that's why I had to bring in my pubes as well. Whoa. <laughs> wow. They're very luscious. And I must say, if at the barbecue they said bring a plate, that would be very surprising. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, Luke, what do you got? Well, I wanted to bring something practical as well as surprising. So this provides me some protection while also bringing surprising for everyone who's there. It's a mask in the shape of a butt. <laughs> you know what's frightening is it doesn't look too dissimilar to your face already. <laughs> so <laughs> how will people know that you've got it on? Um, what? <laughs> Most people would notice that I don't have a nose anymore. Um, <laughs> um, Julia, what have you brought us that would surprise us at a barbecue? I don't know how surprising and it's certainly not amusing, but here it is. I had it made. It's a chocolate Taskmaster envelope. Oh, just like the envelope from the show? <laughs> yes, sir. I've got one for you right here. Now, the idea was to be a crawler. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Michael, what you have done is you've brought a dessert to a barbecue. Yes. I mean, it's slightly surprising. You're like, oh, did you bring chops? No, I brought dessert. Oh, that's convenient. You're not like, oh, what the f dessert? <laughs> like, it's not a... That's true. It's not a huge surprise. Danielle. For me, barbecues are family affairs, mm -hmm. um, and I thought my family would be pretty surprised if I rocked up to um, the next barbecue in this. Oh. <laughs> I've met you, and if you rocked up to a barbecue in that, I would not be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Me? And I feel like your family wouldn't be surprised either. In fact, I feel like your family would also be wearing that. <laughs> well, I think we can agree these are all very surprising things to bring to a barbecue. I just have to give them some scores. I think Julia's at the bottom on one, because uh, a dessert is not very surprising. <laughs> Bringing a mask that looks like your actual face is not that surprising. <laughs> So two points for you, Luke. This is, uh, this is really backfired. <laughs> Danielle with the fetish suit, I think, three points. Because I, I do think it would be very surprising, but I don't want to kink shame. <laughs> Deeply disturbing to bring a plate of human hair. So four points to Nina. 
but the, the, the sheer aggression of bringing a barbecue to a bar barbecue. <laughs> Five points to Jimmy. That means Jimmy is winning and the other four are not winning. <laughs> Would you like to see a team task? Are we going to see the bad improv group again? What do you reckon? <laughs> I hope this one doesn't put you to sleep. He wasn't impressed. Hello. Oh, how lovely. Hello. You do it. I, you, you, you can. Yeah, your turn. All right. It's quite soft. Make a dream come true. Ooh. Best dream wins. You have 30 minutes. Your time starts now. Make a dream come true. What was my most recent dream? That's also a nightmare, that one. Yeah, um, OK. So... What do we do? So, like, first he goes somewhere and then... Shh, can, can you turn around for a second? Sorry. Can you, get, can you leave? Can you leave? No, leave. leave. Get, oh, get out of here. Yeah, sorry. 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 Yeah. Yeah. sorry. Tom, have you got a dream you'd like us to make come true for you? I can think of a few dreams I had as a child. Yeah, what yeah. are those? This is going to sound potentially a bit creepy. Uh-oh. OK. There was, like, a fly, but it wasn't a real fly. It was, like, a robot fly that I could operate by remote control. Ah. And it would go to, like, my friends' houses and I could see what they were talking about and stuff and I knew all the that information. Is, that is creepy. Wow. You are a big old creep, yeah. aren't you? Because Tom has always been the guy with the pad, he's never got to do any of these fun challenges. So oh. What if we set up... We'll set up Tom a series of tasks. And he, he gets to play... It's a dream come true. He gets true. to do what we do. We could make a fly, which I, I could make a fly, and put it on a stick and have Tom gleefully watching on, a, on his iPad what's going on and he's like, oh, yes, I can finally get to watch Julia sleep. I've always wanted to watch Julia sleep because he's a big creep. A sleeper. I was also going to say, what if his dream is like his parents telling them that they're proud of him? That's a great idea. All right, she's up on the slab. Whee! Actually, hang on. You can't, you can't sleep in a bra. Oh, yeah, you can. No, so you're going to take that off. Are you guys OK with me taking it off? Of course. Boom! Oh. Over shoulder, boulder, holder, Tom. There it goes. Yes, that's for your dream later on tonight, Tom. <laughs> Good to see the bad improv group is back. You weren't tempted to maybe go to a hospital and make a sick child's dream come true? <laughs> In our defence, Tom does have the energy of a sickly child. <laughs> Look at him, he's like, he's like, oh, oh, my little tack, oh. It will be a high bar, though, for these uh, two teams to make my dreams come true, because working with you is, is a dream come true in and of itself. <laughs> Here's our first set of dreamers attempting to recreate something that's actually cute and innocent and not even that creepy at all. It's Julia and Danielle. <laughs> In order for authenticity, I feel like then I need to dribble out the side of my mouth. Okay. Okay. If we could get a close up on that dribbly mouth so that Tom can really see that close up on the iPad, he'll love that so much. Yes, Mr. Gleason. You're the master, Mr. Gleason. I'll do anything you say, Mr. Gleason. As long as it's a task. Yeah, that's good. Tom, is this really a dream or more of a nightmare, do you think? I mean, I'm regretting telling you guys about this. I know I'm supposed to be judging the teams, but I feel like judging you, Tom. Uh, <laughs> you seem like a bit of a creep. I mean, lots of people will often, when they're asked what their favourite uh, superpower would be, they talk about being invisible and sneaking yes. around and looking at people nude. And I just want a fly, when I was 12, to look at what the goss was with, at my friends' houses and stuff and uh, uh, leave me alone. <laughs> oh, so are you suggesting that Julia and Danielle turned your innocent dream into a creepy one? That is my accusation. Can I ask what the difference was between your dream and what we created? Uh, someone took off their bra. <laughs> Danielle, why were you kissing me in Tom's dream? Because I 
felt like there was an inherent creepiness in Tom's dream and he wanted to catch people doing stuff that was odd. If you think someone else is kissing the Taskmaster in my dream, you're crazy. <laughs> I think it's really important that we point out too, where, where was the dance? Oh, yes. Because I should point out, in the group tasks, they've got an extra task where they have to do a dance at the end. No extra points for it. It doesn't right. count in the competition and the other team doesn't have to do the dance. <laughs> but you didn't do it this time. Did we Maybe. forget to do it? You forgot to do it. We did. Did, we? did we? Well, it was a completely pointless task, but as part of that task, if you do forget to do it, you, you lose points. Oh. What? Yeah, you got zero all those times for doing it, and the one time you haven't done it, I think minus one. OK, that is really rude of you, and I'm not talking to you outside of the studio. Um, that's the way I prefer it. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hi, Luke. Is this is for me. Dear Tom, we know that you are very sad that you don't get to do any of the tasks, so we want to make your dreams come true. Your first job is to become the Taskmaster. You have five minutes. Your time starts now. Make it, um, make it three minutes. Make it three minutes. So you just update the tasks. Yeah. OK. Oh, I have no respect for my assistant even though he tries his best and works day in, day out. I treat him with no respect at all. Please move outside for your next task. OK. Hello. There's the task. Put the object in the bucket from the giraffe. You have five minutes. Your time starts now. Put this in the bucket? Yeah. Oh, what's this? Is this part of it? The goose. All the information you need is in the task. Geese you can be quite aggressive. Four minutes. How did you orchestrate that? That's called nature, baby. Yes! We shall now move on to your next task. Here's your final task. Come into the lab and make your parents proud. Proudest parents win. You have two minutes. Your time starts now. Oh, Dad, your hair's so much more... Shut up, son. Make me proud. <laughs> it's a bit harsh. I think that help. 50 seconds. Well, we, we really love you, son. Um, you, you love me? Yeah. yeah. I think you're doing a great job as the taskmaster on the... The taskmaster's assistant. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's not what he said. That's, did he say... You're not the boss. No, I'm the assistant. We've already told everyone at the RSL that you're the taskmaster. They'll be giving us discounts. So what power do you have? Any? Oh, I wouldn't call it power. I'd more call it responsibility. Are you the one with the whistle? Yeah. Oh! You make me sick. <laughs> That's who I want as a son. Blow the whistle! Wait, we've got to do the reveal. It was me all along, Tom. <laughs> oh, Luke. It, it, we, know you, it's not, we know your parents. Oh, yeah, no and, way. and it was me all along. I wasn't um, just me in a suit. Your face was never obscured. All right, I think the best way to end this is one of those 80s movies. Everyone jumps in the air and high-fives at the same time, and then they freeze us in the air. A climactic high-five. <laughs> OK, so the roles were reversed there. Thanks for demonstrating that tasks aren't that easy to come up with, are they? <laughs> Do you really think that his lifelong dream was to take part in a task that involved throwing a thing in a bucket? <laughs> and the geese that we organised? The geese? We yeah, organised some geese, geese as yeah. well? Those yeah. were ducks. Mm -hmm. OK, we asked for geese, so... <laughs> <laughs> Tom was genuinely terrified of those geese. They're ducks, Nina, for the last time. <laughs> Didn't you try and fight some ducks earlier? I fought the geese. The geese are at the lake. Those are from the pond. <laughs> All right, so I guess the real question is, did your dream come true? Well, how many points do I receive? Uh, five. 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 Oh, no, five. wait! Six. <laughs> that has turned the table somewhat. <laughs> Which dream do you think was better? I think the fly dream was... Unfortunately, a very accurate depiction. <laughs> but being awarded six points just blew my mind. <laughs> so I'm going to have to give the Bad Improv Act five points. <laughs> and I'm going to have to give Julia and Danielle four points. 
but let's not forget, minus one points because you didn't do the dance. <laughs> what are their overall scores in this episode so far, Tom? Jimmy is currently in the lead with ten points. <laughs> well, let's get straight into another task then, shall we? All right, here's a task we may never see the likes of ever again. Hi, Julia. Hello, friend. Hello. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is it dropping down? Hi, Danielle. Hey. <laughs> Is it... Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Where, where are you looking? I think it might have landed over there. Oh! <laughs> Do the most incredible once in a lifetime thing. You must never have done it before. And you must never do it again. You have 30 minutes, your time starts now. Are you gonna like follow me around for the rest of my life to make sure I don't do it again? No, but I'll hear about it. <laughs> mm. So they must never have done it before and must never do it again and most incredible wins. Would you like to see the first attempt? I'd love to. Here's one of Reese's pieces. It's Jimmy Reese. <laughs> never towed a caravan without assistance of a machine. Do you think you could? Let's, well, let's just give it a go. OK. OK. I need a costume, I think. OK. This ute could pull it and I'll be ute man. OK. You've got one job. You've got to facilitate the birth of ute man. Oh. A beautiful ute baby. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> Strange unit you are. Oh, yep. I think it's ready to move. I might just have to put a marker down so you can see. Here's the starting position. Right. Here we go. Come on, you man! Ready? Bend in the knees, you man! Oh, did you see it? <laughs> that was the start of the banana. It's gone at least that much of a banana. Wow, that's amazing. It's hard pressed to beat that, I think. See you, Dad. <laughs> Very good, Jimmy. It's good to see the dress ups back. I quite liked it. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it gave you a bit of a backstory. Yeah. <laughs> You've never pulled a caravan before in your life, have you? No. I do have a caravan and I do have a ute and I often join them together and... <laughs> is joining them together how a ute baby is made? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it's like Avatar. So part of the point of this task is that it needs to be incredible. I think an argument could be made that it wasn't the most incredible thing we've ever seen. However, it was once in a lifetime. It was once in a lifetime and he didn't do it again. Which is great. Except we should probably check the footage one more time to make sure that that's true. OK. <laughs> Tom Cashman. Oh, did you see it? See it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it again for you. OK. <laughs> Just to do it again for you. Are you doing it again? Doing it again. <laughs> I think I'll just to give it one more. Go! I'm just gonna do one more. Come on, you stupid caravan! <laughs> okay, blow the whistle. Oh, that's such a shame because I was just saying how you did such a great job. <laughs> Jimmy moved the caravan five times in the space of three minutes. <laughs> Would you like to see another one? Yes. It must be wet on the East Coast and dry in Peru because La Nina is here. <laughs> I'm going to go to the... I was going to say the oven. What's that thing called? A shed. Shed. I'm going to try and make, like, a Rube Goldberg machine. What's that? It's like a domino, but you have all different things. Oh! This is the best day of my life. I think Rube would be proud. Stay. Stay. Say, no, I mean, that's just actually good. Maybe I'm like Rube Goldberg reincarnated. When that grows up, that will spur this ball to roll. 30 seconds. 
I think I've got it. Okay, are you ready for my big machine? Okay, who's next? <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? Good job. <laughs> Nailed it. Well, if there's one plus, I'm glad you're never going to do that ever again in your life because I don't want to see it again in my life. <laughs> Even if the machine had worked, the skateboard was going to go down the ramp and then what was it going to do that, at that point? It was going to go onto the pizza flipper, which yep. was going to somehow push the ball, which was going to drop onto the net, which was going to flip it over. Rube Goldberg never used the word somehow when trying to explain <laughs> how his machine works. I didn't realise you were old enough to be friends with Rube Goldberg. <laughs> Saying that I'm old isn't an insult. It just means I own a house and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> OK, who's next? Here's Julia and Danielle. Wet T-shirt competition is where my mind immediately goes to. OK. But I'm not sure that's what anyone wants to see. I can't do that. What? It's going to rob the house next door. Oh, no. Oh! Do you know what I've never done? What? Doughies. What's that? That's where you fang your car in a circle. Oh, donuts. Yeah. I want to have a pool in the ute. In the back of the ute? Yeah, with bubble bath. With bubble bath? Yes. You might want to remove the glasses. Well, I, don't, I'm, I need the glasses more than I need the helmet, don't I? <laughs> OK, let's get in the car, Tom. Are you a religious man, Tom? No. It might be time to reach out to your God if you want to. OK. No. What was that? Nothing. There's a bubble found. That is simply a fart. You farted? Tom, we're going to send it! Woo! Oh. Oh. <laughs> We're actually going quite slowly in a straight line. Uh oh, I'm fine. <laughs> it wasn't a fart, was it? <laughs> I wish there was another gun because you'd love it. It's really fun. <laughs> We're just driving in circles at quite a moderate speed. <laughs> No, 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 no. Is the brake working? Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, oh, God. oh dear Lord. Oh, no. Oh. You've got 38 seconds. One more. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. We totally sent it. There are vaguely indents in the grass. That, mm. sir, is a donut. Danielle, are you saying that in Queensland having a bath is a once-in-a-lifetime event? <laughs> no, I just never got to do it in the ute. I always wanted to as a kid, but Dad's oh. ute tray was rusted out. Hang on, this is something you've actually dreamed of already? I can't believe you thought about it before the day you did that task. Because <laughs> uh, Nina clearly hadn't. <laughs> now, Julie, you had a helmet on, but you didn't give one to Tom Cashman. What's that about? <laughs> There was only one available on the day. Your one bit of concern for my safety was just asking me whether I believed in God. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon a donut is? I feel like you need more slippage when you're doing a donut. I've only ever heard about donuts. I've never seen them, never done them. Well, you grew up in Gosford, though. I know. <laughs> but no donuts. Your parents probably did one driving you home from the hospital. <laughs> But, uh, no, I'd, I'd never done a donut and I have no intentions of ever doing one again. What about okay. uh, driving carefully in a circle? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, there's one left. Doing it once, it's Luke McGregor. I'm thinking I might jump in the lake. You've never jumped in a lake before? No. 
Like I've been in a pool before, but I've never just yes. like seen a lake and gone, I'll just jump in that. Have there been opportunities in your past where you could have jumped in a lake? I guess every time I've been near a lake, I guess, yeah. I don't think I've ever jumped in a lake either. Do you want to jump in with me? Oh. If I like it, I'm going to jump in a lake again, but I'll never jump in a lake holding hands with you again okay. after this moment. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> What are you thinking? Like I googled the amount of stuff you can get from a lake. Is it just a lot of bacteria? Do you have any open wounds? No. Okay. But you've got a butthole, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's yeah. So me too. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no hiding it now. <laughs> Do you want to jump in there? I think want wouldn't be the right word. You want to just make out instead? <laughs> Make out. And then we don't have to get in the lake. Yeah, like we'll just kiss, no tongue. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Do you want to dip me or do you want to be dipped? Perhaps I should be dipped. Okay. I'm saying this is your idea. Full consent? Yeah, full consent. Okay. I'm going to come in like this. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to go out. And then just put your arm over here. And then down. Okay, I'm coming in, Tom. Mm. Still full consent? Mm. 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 <laughs> I think that'll come out really good on camera. That's your once-in-a-lifetime thing? Oh, do you want to draw each other? Can you look out for a second? <laughs> Whoa! All right, I'm done. It's actually lovely. So is yours. It's the alternate universe where you got into the lake. And how good do our asses feel right now? My ass feels normal. <laughs> well, uh, I'm getting sunburned, so I'm going to go back inside. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Oh, God. Oh, I forgot. So, Luke, are you a germaphobe? Yep. And uh, I thought just before I jump in, I'll do a quick Google. That was a mistake. <laughs> so you couldn't even do it just that once? No, I was scared of all the bacteria that can crawl up. <laughs> if you think there's bacteria in a lake, wait till you... <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> Having watched that, what were you actually doing once in a lifetime there? You know, it's just a collection of weird events. If you put anything together in a random list like that, you'll probably never do it again. Yeah, well, that was the whole idea of the task, right? <laughs> OK, well, I guess I should score them, shouldn't I? I have a vested interest in Luke's doing well, I've just realised, because if you give him five points, that means kissing me is incredible. <laughs> Well, I think we all agree that Jimmy is disqualified. I can't believe this, but somehow you're not going to get one, Nina. You're getting two. Yes! <laughs> and then I'm going to give Luke three. Danielle got very excited by a bath, but given she's been looking forward to it for a whole life, I'll give her four points. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. Julia Morris is going to get five points for doing a very, very large, ordinary donut. <laughs> okay. I believe we're going to jump straight into another task. What can you tell me about it, Tom Cashman? If this task isn't completed in 30 minutes or less, it's free. Hello, Tom! Where are you? Hello? Hi, babes! Buongiorno! Buongiorno! How you going, buddy? Just waiting for the sound delay, are you? OK, that's a little truck. That's a tricycle. Boat. Friend. Pizza. Oh, there's pizza. <laughs> oh, OK. Deliver this pizza to Tom. The fewest steps wins. Your time starts now. Ah, Forza Italia! So time didn't matter in this one. Our contestants needed to deliver the pizza to me in the fewest steps possible. A step is the action of raising a foot and placing it down elsewhere. I know what a step is. <laughs> anyway, let's watch them try. The first to step up to not step is Danielle and Jimmy. There's a goose poo right there. I've got no traction, Tom! God, this is a nightmare. 
Come on, boat. This thing sucks. That's not steps. That's crawling, dude. Quick! Oh, yeah! Gosh. Is that actually you, Tom? Buongiorno. You! Bastards! That's not Tom? Oh, my God! Buongiorno. Come to take care you opened with Italian, dude. Oh, for goodness sake. Come on! Where does this even go? Yeah, come on. OK. Pizza! <laughs> Big steps, come on. Hop! Hop! Tom! I'm just going to crawl and find Tom. Oh! <laughs> Ooh. Thomas Marjorie Cashman. I don't know what your middle name is, but you disgust me. <laughs> don't drop the pizza. Oh, it's very wet. <laughs> is he in there? No! Far out. Where's my pizza? Oh, this is good. I've got a pizza bag now. Is this pizza? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Thanks, Daniel. How are you feeling? Honestly, I might vomit. Oh, right. Thanks, Jimmy. No worries, mate. Enjoy. Yeah. Did you enjoy this task? No. The boat sank when I was in the lake. It started to sink. So, yeah, I had to get pulled out of the lake. <laughs> and that's why you're a bit wet there at the end. Yeah, my asshole is in heaps of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must admit, the presentation of the pizza at the very end for Danielle, it was not too bad. Not the worst. Jimmy's was almost perfect somehow. How did you strap it up into a ball, Jimmy, and then... <laughs> turn it back into a pizza again. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> it's also good to know that if we do have a pay dispute, we can replace Tom Cashman with the Italian Tom. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> How'd they do? Jimmy took 50 steps. Danielle took 48 steps. <gasps> Two less than Jimmy. All right, Tom, who else have you got? Neither of them are Hawaiian, but they're both supreme. It's Julia and Luke. <laughs> Deliver this pizza to Tom. Few steps swing. Your tongue starts... now. <laughs> <laughs> this, I'm not convinced, is going to carry the pizza all that way, Tom. <laughs> we are going to discuss your outfit when I get there. I'm coming, Tom. Is it bomb? Is it fake, Tom? Buongiorno. <sighs> Terrific task, guys. Really appreciate it. Oh, no. Is that not you, Tom? Tom, I don't have my glasses. Can you give me a heads up that that's you? Buongiorno. OK, great. OK, great. <laughs> so I'm going to park it over there and come, come back to you. <laughs> I don't think I've done this well. <laughs> Ow! Stinging metal, Tom. Ah! It's stinging my vagine. <laughs> uh. Buongiorno. I've just realised I'm not meant to be delivering it to you because you're not Tom. It's only just this second occurred to me. <laughs> so we're the living f is Tom. Yeah. You're not Tom, are you? Where are you, Tom, you cheeky f Do you know where Tom is? Buongiorno. Oh. I've got f Ed Sheeran over here pretending he's you. I just wanted to do this. You ready? Buongiorno. <laughs> I'm going to slap the living f out of Tom when I see him with his pizza. Oh, no. That's, that's still working. That's still, that's still fine. That's working. This is not even the way to go. <laughs> Did you see that flying in my mouth? Tom! Buongiorno. Not you! The last thing my teenager said to me was, don't embarrass me. Oh. <laughs> Tom, I'm actually going to kill you. Huh? Has Tom gone? <laughs> this has always been my favourite Tom anyway. 
Hi, Luke. Hey, buddy. <laughs> That's the whole pizza? Yeah. Well, one slice is with Buongiorno. Uh, um... Hi, Julia. You might like some pizza, Tom. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> douchebag. So, Julia, I sense that you really enjoyed that task. Yeah. Honestly, when I got over there and realised it wasn't Tom, it was all of my strength not to really turn. <laughs> Julia took approximately one step every two seconds. <laughs> What about you, Luke? It was not as clear as if you were as frustrated. I used to be a pizza deliverer, and it's way easier with a, with a car and an address. <laughs> <laughs> Julia took a total of 961 steps. <laughs> and Luke took 902 steps. <laughs> OK, there's one left, yeah? That's right. Is it last because she's been successful We'll see. It's Nino Ayama. I feel like this pizza just means the singular slice. One. Buongiorno. That's... That's not... That feels like a Tom look-alike. Can you say buongiorno again? Buongiorno. Can you say it again? Buongiorno. I reckon Tom's in the house. There he goes. Well, now we are cooking with gas. No. You can't go. You can't go. Oh, I really feel like he's down at the lake and that is him and it wasn't a trick. I'm either going to be the smartest person or the dumbest person. No! Oh, man, oh, yeah, he's definitely at the lake. That was what they call in the business a bust. So, oh, no! Oh, well, I'm just gonna have to go with the rest of the pizza. Sorry, bro. We're back here where it all began. Oh, oh. okay, hi. Buongiorno. Sorry for the long wait, sir. Buongiorno. That's amore. <laughs> oh my god. Do you have my pizza? I've been waiting more than half an hour. Oh, is... <gasps> Where's my pizza? It's it's coming. It's coming. Oh, well this is cool. Luckily, I left a pizza on the ground here. I'm not giving up. I'm jumping. <laughs> Dinner is served! Nina, we were all wanting you to win. What no. happened? You worked out so early that it wasn't Tom Cashman. Why did you change your mind? Because I was just thought they wouldn't make us go up the stairs. <laughs> Once I got to the stairs, I was like, nah, they wouldn't. I think the real tragedy of this task is, if you believed in yourself, you would have won. <laughs> I think that's the tragedy of my entire life. <laughs> that's actually true as well. If you'd gone upstairs... At that point. At that point, you're only on 37 steps. Oh. <laughs> How did she do in total? 505 steps. Still all right. We have Julia on one point, Yay! Luke with two, Nina with three somehow, and then we have Jimmy with four, and Danielle wins the task with five points. Yay! Okay. And what about episode scoreboard? Who's getting that butt mask? <laughs> Danielle is in the lead with 15 points. Yay! Okay. There's no better time than now to settle it for once and all. Everyone up on the stage, we're going live! <laughs> I see you've got some refreshments for us, Tom. And Julia will tell us why. Julia, please read the task. Oh, I shall do so. <laughs> Pick a biscuit. 
That's what it says, pick a biscuit. <laughs> I'm going to go for nice because my English teacher used to say nice means sticky biscuits. Well, my last name's Scottish and I've got fingers, so I guess I'll go the Scotch finger. <laughs> I'm going to take the one with some pink and red in it. It's an iced vovo. What's that one called? It's a ginger nut. Luke McGregor. <laughs> and I'll just take the last one. I know what you're thinking. This is the easiest task in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. In time with the music, Dunk and undunk your biscuit in your tea and coffee when you hear the whistle. At any stage, you may surrender by placing your biscuit on the plate. If your biscuit breaks, you are disqualified. <laughs> Last fully intact biscuit to be surrendered wins. Please step up to your biscuits. Can I kneel? Stand by. <gasps> oh. I think it's going to last much longer. I'm going to do that. It's not intact. Oh. Nina has surrendered. Stop slowing it down, Tom. <laughs> Come on, Ginger Nut! <laughs> I've already lost Jimmy. <laughs> my, mine is crumbled now. I will surrender my biscuit. <laughs> I see. We could have surrendered so we didn't lose the biscuit. <laughs> I thought you just chose to surrender because you were weak. <laughs> okay, well, we have a winner for our live task. Well done. Round of applause for Jimmy Reese. <laughs> Welcome back to Taskmaster Australia. We've been deep in a riveting game of Bicky dunking. Jimmy had a solid one left. Mm -hmm. And you also did okay, didn't you, Nina? Yes. I surrendered real early. OK, talk us through your failure, Luke. Uh, well, occasionally I would touch the biscuit to see if it had any structural integrity left. <laughs> and I think in doing that, I ruined the structural integrity of the biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are the final scores for this task? So we have three disqualifications. Nina receives four points for that task, and Jimmy takes it home with five points. Oh, OK. <laughs> Who is our winner for tonight's episode? So at the end of tonight's episode, one point in front of Nina, it's Jimmy with 19 points. <laughs> Congratulations, Jimmy. Five surprising things belong to you. Get on stage and get yourself to a barbecue. <laughs> That's it. Episode seven done and dusted. We learnt that Tom Cashman could be watching any of us at any moment with a remote control fly. <laughs> We learnt that Tom Cashman's body double needs Italian lessons. <laughs> In non-Tom-centric news, we learnt that our winner for episode seven is Jimmy. Show them the love they deserve for at least a few seconds. We'll see you next week. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!